Hello everybody, and welcome back to the playthrough. This is episode 71, and for today's episode we're going to spend about 5 or 10 minutes just uh, finishing off some last little bits from our laundry list of chores in our previous episode. Mainly it's just to do with the silver, I'm going to continue smelting it down, and we'll have a look at some other upgrades as well. And I think for the rest of the video after that we're probably going to focus on having a look at one of the mountain dungeons that we haven't explored yet. We've uncovered a few of them, and I thought that we might as well go and check them out and see what they're about. What good loot we can find inside. Obviously we have uncovered the hard mode version of them as well, but we're not going to visit that one just yet, as it's a hard mode version, and I don't think I'm ready to go visit that just yet. I think our gear might only just carry us through the normal version, so we'll... Uh, sorry, cloth here, but you're going to have to wait for one of your quest items. The cloth here being the second trader that we've uncovered. This does, She was the one that we found on the edge of the Black Forest, or the meadows and the plains. And she had a whole bunch of clothing for sale, a bunch of fashionable stuff. She also gave us a whole bunch of markers on the map, which are crypts and swamp crypts and burial chambers and dungeons. There's a... Um, I believe it's called the Howling Caverns on the mountain. We found one of those, but yeah, we're not going to visit that one just yet. We might pop back there in future try and complete a few of them. There are quite a few of them in the plains as well, so yeah, we might we might go and visit those in a, in the far future, maybe when we get to Misslands or Ashlands. I want a decent level of armour before we head back there, as they are quite difficult. Some of them that I've done so far have been quite tough. And this is in previous worlds, I haven't done any on this playthrough yet. Now we just have to awkwardly sweat, walk our way to the forge, drop all of our silver in the chest. Perfect. I made quite a few of them as well. Okay, let's see what we can do. Obviously, Frostner is one of the upgrades I want to focus on doing. We do have our Silver Sword as well, which we might upgrade, although that does need iron, leather scraps, silver, and wood. Pretty much have to build a whole new version of it in order to upgrade it. Our Wolfhide stuff is all max upgrade, so we don't have to worry about that. So having a quick look at the different the difference in damage between the two weapons. Obviously Frostner's damage is a lot higher because it's upgraded. But the Silver Sword isn't that far off, and it does have the additional spirit damage as well. Do also have silver arrows. I'm thinking about making some of these as we have run out of the obsidian arrows we had. One silver, two feathers, eight wood, and I believe that'll make twenty arrows. Yes it will. It literally says at the top of the crafting menu there, twenty arrows. Could probably do with some decent arrow levels, at least if we're going to take on the boss. We should definitely have the highest level available. I think for now we'll probably stick with um, Obsidian, just because I'm not taking on the boss just yet. And we don't use the bow and arrow that much. The drakes really aren't that difficult to handle, so we'll um, we'll stick with the basic ones for now. Or the Obsidian ones for now. Just grab a bit more wood. We are running desperately low on wood. I think we're running low on coal as well, so we're going to have to do another gathering session of wood soon. Luckily, it only takes us a few minutes to grab a whole bunch, so that's um, not as a, not as cumbersome of a job as I originally thought it was. Apologies if you heard the roaring of an engine outside just then. <laughs> Apparently someone really had to put their foot down for that corner they just took. Right, obsidian arrows. Let's do a couple of hundred stacks if we can. A couple of hundred stacks? No, that's too many. Uh, a couple of stacks of 100. There we go. <laughs> so that's better. A couple of hundred stacks would be about 20,000 arrows, Jesus. I don't think I quite have the crafting materials to make that many. Plenty of fine wood. We haven't got much ancient or coal wood left, but we don't really need it. There isn't anything that's required it so far. Okay, one other thing I would like to do, I didn't mention this in the previous episode, but this was on the list of chores I wanted to do, which was to build this. The Obliterator. I have half explained this in the past, when we, I think when we bought the Thunderstone for it. 
Thunderstone is an item you have to buy from the merchant. This is the standard merchant, which is in the Black Forest. You do also need a bunch of other materials for it. I believe it's wood and copper. It might just be copper, actually. Oh, it's iron as well. We need eight iron, four copper, and one thunderstone. And we also need the forge in order to place it down, so we might have to move the forge over here in order to um, to build it. We'll see what the build radius is like. I'm just trying to find a good place for it. Mm, I don't really want to put it too close to any buildings, because it does do area damage, and I don't want it to be damaging walls and stuff. Maybe out here? Ah, oh, that might be a bit too close to the garden, though. Oh, it's a tough decision. I think we might stick it here, actually. Just up on this bit here. Although, I, I kind of want to lower that level because otherwise we're going to have to um, awkwardly climb up and stand next to it every time we use it. We'll lower that a little bit more. Hit that bit there. That should get us a nice sloped bit. Can we put it in here? Hmm, not really. <laughs> Let's take this corner down here. About now. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Now I can just walk straight up to it and use it, although it does look a bit janky with that lumpy ground we've just made. Okay, so let's show you how this whole thing works. So with the obliterator, there's two components to it. There is a chest component and a lever. You fill the chest component with um, things you don't want anymore. So as you can see, we had lots and lots of stacks of resin and we weren't really using it that much. So I've just grabbed three stacks of 50, we're going to dump it in there, and then we're going to pull the lever. Now, be very careful when using this, especially if you're on really low health, as it knocks you back and does a bit of damage to you. Thor bestows you with a gift. And if you open up the chest again, uh, you'll see we have 15 coal. So the obliterator is basically a glorified rubbish bin. If you have a whole bunch of stuff, and if you're a bit like me and you don't like just randomly dumping things all over the place, and you've gathered quite a few things and stuff that you don't need, but you've got hundreds of it, like resin and stuff like that, you can always use the obliterator to gain yourself a bit of extra coal. But obviously, as you saw there, we were getting five bits of coal for one stack, or I think it was one bit of coal for every ten resin that was in there. Now, I'm not sure if different materials have different costs, so if you put, say, like a silver bar in there, maybe you'll get a stack of ten coal and stuff like that. It might all just be the same. It might be one coal for every ten items that you put in there, but, um, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good. I quite like it. Uh, you just have to be really careful using it, because if you're on very low health, the damage could kill you. I've never seen anyone ever, ever die from using that, but let's just say you've uh, your base has been raided, you're on really low health, you're running back in, and you click the lever by accident, and boom, you die. It's uh, <laughs> not going to be the greatest situation. Okay, just going to reorganise the hotbars, get rid of stuff we don't need, like the cultivator, we've got some potions. This is our silver sword, looks quite good, it's quite long. Whoops, oh, I did not mean to damage that beehive. Oh god, the bees are attacking me. I've been poisoned, sorry bees, my bad. Let's just pull out the hammer and repair that, really sorry about that guy. <laughs> we just whacked the beehive and probably killed half the bees in there, really sorry about that. Alright. This is our silver sword. Quite like it because it's quite long. It does have quite a wide arc of swing, so it's it's pretty good. And this is our frost frostner, kind of like Mjolnir, but frostner. Pretty decent hammer as well. Really like using it. We've got our healing mead as well, a medium healing mead. Again, I can't remember when you get the large healing mead. I think it's a bit later on. Okay, it's getting close to night. The sun is going down, so we're just going to go to bed early and get a good night's sleep. You dream of a great tree reaching out through the night. One half of its branches crackle with flames, the other are green with leaves. Hopefully that's not the world tree burning away. Okay, pop our food. We've, got, we've upgraded some of our food to a bit higher level, just so we get some more health and stamina from it. Okay, so it was the... I want to go to the caves that are on the mountain on our island rather than going off to the boss mountain. I don't think we found any proper caves on the boss mountain. I think it was just the uh, the Howling Caverns crypt, like the, the hard mode version. Whereas I want to go and take on one of the normal ones. And considering there's one a short walk from us, even though we have a portal right there because I'm lazy, we're going to jump through that portal and go and visit that mountain.
Oh yes, this portal is completely uncovered. Hmm, not the greatest idea. Fortunately enough, there is meadows right on the edge of this mountain, so I don't think it's been attacked. Well, obviously it hasn't been attacked. Go away, Grayling. Oh, another wolf. Nope. Bad dog. Really? The sword didn't one-shot you? Hmm. Oh, another one. Oh god, he almost fell down the mountain himself. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So the sword can one-shot. You just have to be careful as to where you swing it. Okay. Let's keep travelling upwards. Get ourselves to this dungeon. Cavern, dungeon, same thing. Ah, it's just up there. You can see the kind of icicle teeth on the entrance. Oh, okay. <laughs> I tried to ping it just to make sure that was the one I was looking at, but apparently it pinged the ground. Maybe it doesn't count the top of the mountain? Hmm. Strange. Yeah, this is definitely it. You can see the marker on the map in front of us. It actually looks like the open mouth of a dragon. Or a wolf or something. Okay, so these are the dungeon... Uh, dungeon, the mountain crypts, or the mountain... Was it Howling Caverns, I believe it's called? Frost Caves, there we go. Finally have a name. Okay, so this wall right in front of us is ice. You can tell that it's breakable with your... Pretty much anything. You can use pickaxe, axe, sword, any of your weapons. I think you can even shoot it with your bow. You can tell it's breakable with the fact that it's blue. And it also has a crack going through the middle of it. You can see another one here. There we go. You just hit it once and that breaks it down. Now there are a number of different creatures that you can encounter whilst in the frost caves. One of them being a bat. You can encounter lots of bats and they are annoying as heck. You can also find more of the crystals. So if you've avoided fighting the stone golems up until this point but you want crystals in order to craft the axe and stuff like that, then you can get them from inside the frost caves. You also have these things called Fenris Claws, which are used to build a mountain armor set and weapons as well. I believe there's weapons as well that are included with that. Ah, there we go. You can see some more crystals on the side of the cave there. Oh, hello. This is one of the uh, mountain monsters called the Ulv, which is essentially a werewolf. That's what I call them. This thing is creepy. Definitely hits harder than a wolf, but it's pretty much as easy to kill as a wolf. So, again, just make sure you're blocking, parrying, that kind of stuff. Nice and easy. You can dodge out of the way as well, but usually you will encounter them like this, which is you'll find three or four of them all lying on the ground, and they will all get up and attack when you uh, get close enough to them. They drop things like wolf fangs. And these cave systems are very uh, maze-like. As with majority of other crypts and caverns and stuff on the game, they are very maze-like. But you can also encounter little areas like this, which is a wooden gate. Almost a bit like an underground cultist type area. See some bones and stuff on the floor here, there's some braziers. There's some Fenris hair as well, which is the other item you need. There you go, you can see our crafting recipe, Fenris coat, leggings and flesh rippers, which are kind of fist weapons. There's meat piles on the floor, in which you can which you can find various bits of meat. Oh, sounds like there's something on the other side of that wall, but we can't knock it down. Ah, so this was literally just one room, fair enough. I thought there might have been a, a way round to wherever that is. It's definitely something on the other side of that wall. But we're going to have to keep exploring and find the other section of this dungeon that has that tunnel in it. Okay, let's keep looking around. Aha, that looks like another entrance or doorway there. Is that an entrance or doorway? No, it's more of a... I think it's just one of the walls, but we can kind of see inside a little bit. That means there's definitely quite a big area that we haven't uncovered yet. So let's keep wandering around, see if we can see any bats. Bats can be a bit of a pain in the backside, mainly because they fly, there are lots of them at once, and they don't do a huge amount of damage per attack, but they are difficult to kill. I believe they drop leather scraps. Oh, hello, there's an orb there, hello. Oh, thought you were going to attack us and then didn't. Aha, here's one of the others. Oh, wow, let's back away from him. So this is a cultist, so these are kind of 
intelligent elves, which will do huge amounts of damage with their fire attacks. As you can see there, I got hit by both of them doing a fire attack, so the um, fire debuff, the damage over time, was hitting very hard. Here is another new material, it's got a red ute. It's basically just cloth, you can use it to craft certain things. They're mostly cosmetic, and we'll probably build some, uh, some of the pits that you can, like the cosmetic pieces you can build with them. There's another meat pile there. I think the meat piles mostly drop the um, entrails. There's some more Fenris hair and claws. We'll grab as many of these as we can. Meat pile. Oh, there's some more Fenris hair here. So sometimes you will see these kind of banners hanging from on the sides of the walls. You can see them here. They are made out of Fenris hair and you can, if you can jump and attack at the right time, you can knock them down from the top of the banner and get all of the Fenris hair and sometimes they will be a bit too high up for you to reach. So sometimes you won't, you won't be able to get all of them. But if you find enough caverns, you can you can gather plenty of Fenris hair, and you don't have to worry about too much about doing that. If you just attack the bottom half of the of the banner, you will get most of it. So as you can see there, we've got two claws and 12 bits of hair. Now the mountain armor set is very similar to the swamp root armor set, and the troll hide leather armor set that you can make from the black forest it's a differing version of armor which is lighter so you can move a bit faster it doesn't have the movement speed decrease for being heavy armor and also comes with uh, a set bonus for wearing the full set i believe the mountain one is melee speed and damage but i could be wrong about that obviously with the weapon that comes along with it being claws, which are fist weapons. It kind of makes sense. I believe you also get even more increased move speed, so it makes you move pretty fast. Might be useful for going into the planes. And the armor level is still quite high with it. It's just obviously not as good as silver. Okay, so I think we've um, pretty much discovered everything in that area, so let's go off this side. And again, like other crypts and dungeons and stuff, when you walk in there are three different ways that you can go. Sometimes one of those ways will be permanently blocked from the start. Oh, there we go, there's a bat. Bats are aggressive as well. They may fly, they may fly around and avoid you for a while, but they will fly up and start attacking. But as you saw there, it did, I think, 1.7 damage to me, so it <laughs> really wasn't dangerous. Bats are an annoyance more than a threat. Ancient cave markings. Now, I'm not sure what you can do with these ancient, with these ancient cave markings. Oh, there's bats here. I wonder if, are they trapped in the wall? Can't really hit them. I don't think I don't really think you can do anything with the ancient cave markings. I think they're just a thematic kind of law-based thing rather than actual something you can interact with and, and, and do things with. Wooden gates. Oh, there's lots of cultists in here. Jesus. Oh, there's four of them. Oh, this is a bad idea. This is a very bad idea. Well, let's see if we can just chop through them. Look at the stacking damage they've put on me. This is gonna kill me, I think. Run away, run away, run away, I'm gonna die. Pop the potion. Nope, I died. Damn it. Ah, that was silly. As soon as I saw there were four cultists, I should not have run in there. That was a really poor choice. <laughs> Alright, anyway. Well, I think we killed a couple of them anyway, so going back should be uh, nice and easy. Although, we're gonna need an armor set to get in there. Unless we just wanna risk it and run. But I think risking it and running would be a really bad choice. So we're gonna have to go and grab our iron armor set. Oh, apologies, I'm just having a bit of a stretch. Oh, that was not great. I'm just going to stick around in here for a second whilst we get our rested buff. We're going to need that. Thank you very much. 21 minutes. We're losing a couple. Oh no, 21 minutes was the standard. That's what we um, built with this room. Uh, let's grab some food. There we go. We're just going to eat them. We're not going to bother picking them up because we've already got food on our corpse. We just need something to get us to our corpse. Right. Armor set, armor set. Iron. There we go. Not as good as the silver we were wearing, but still it will provide a decent level of protection whilst we get our stuff back. I'm just going to put all my stuff at the top here so it doesn't mess with my gravestone when I pick it up. And let's not waste any time. Let's just get back there and grab our gravestone. To be fair, it was further away from the entrance. I did run away well, before I died, so we should be able to just run and grab our stuff quickly and get out, put our stuff on and, and push back in. So we should be okay. Hopefully the elves or the cultists aren't stood around waiting for our corpse. 
So yeah, the cultists are basically um, sentient versions of the um, werewolves. I call them werewolves. They're probably not actual werewolves. They're like, well, they are like they are a bit like half men, half wolf. So werewolves would be a, an accurate description for them. But they are um, they're very sentient. Obviously, the cultists they wear red robes. They drop the red ute as well. I think there's a blue ute, like a different coloured version of it. And obviously they have spells and stuff they can use, so they can be quite dangerous, as you saw. The stacking debuff we took, because I believe all four of them hit me with a fire attack, was was really heavy. We even popped one of our healing meads and that didn't heal us through it, so yeah, that was a <laughs> that was a silly decision. Okay, Frost Cave. Ah, so we've lost the freezing debuff, but we've still got the cold debuff. That's good. At least we can... Oh, cultist. Run away. Let's just avoid you whilst you do that. Is there any others? Nope, just him. Alright, okay. Grab, grab weapons, put them on. Oh god, he's in office. Take some spirit damage. Boom, he died. Well, it looks like they even explode on death as well, so you have to be careful with these guys. They can, uh, they, maybe they do like a little area explosion when they die. Alright, let's just avoid this. Let you do your little flamethrower attack. One of them hitting me with it isn't that dangerous. It's not that bad whatsoever, but yeah, as I said, four of them. Four of them at once. Not the smartest idea. Oh, there's a werewolf for an old. Put you down. Go and grab the red ute. Thank you very much. Okay, let's put our proper armor set back on. Oh, weird. It looks like we got a couple of pieces on before we started that fight. That's lucky. Even more damage reduction. I don't believe the armor does anything against the fire damage, though. I think having a really high level of fire, a, a really high level of armor, isn't really going to protect you against fire damage. Fire resistance would be the the more prudent item or resistance to have there. But obviously, the um, cultists don't just use fire attacks. They will also. Oh, hello, obsidian coins. Oh, there are chests in here. Nice. Oh yeah, the cultists won't just use fire attacks and spells, they will also run up and melee attack you, so be careful with those. I definitely wouldn't recommend running back completely naked, you'll probably want to bring an armor set just to get your stuff, in case they do decide to gang up and swipe at you. Now the reason I'm knocking all of these ute panels off the wall is obviously to see if there's any loot behind, but you can also loot the red utes from those panels that you knock off, if you destroy them. It's a low chance of dropping them, you only usually get one or two from, from each. Sometimes you won't get any. Um, but again, if you want to make quite a thematically designed base and make it quite um, good looking and stuff like that, the red utes are quite nice. You get some decent, I think you get a rug, you get some like wall coverings and stuff which are similar to what's on the wall behind us. Like little red kind of curtains almost. I think they look pretty good. We'll probably have some of those in our base when we get back. Okay, I think this room is pretty much empty. Let's keep keep exploring. Now, the one thing about the mountain cave, or the mountain crypt, the frost caves, is that all of the items you find in here are not vital to the progression of the game. Now, the reason I say this is because in the Black Forest burial chambers, you needed to get the settling cores in order to smelt metals and to start making metal tools and weapons and armor in the... Swamp Crypt, you have to... Obviously you were going there to get iron, that was your main source of iron to gather, for obviously to progress through the swamp and to make the all, the... all of the upgrades and crafting stuff. Whereas with the mountain, you don't specifically need to come here. There's nothing in here that's vital for the progression of the game. Uh, it's not like skipping coming to these caves will halt your progression through the mountains, oh sorry, the mountains through the plains, which is the next biome, so yeah, these aren't vital areas that you need to come to, but I think they're quite cool. They've added more and more things to make each biome busier and to have more things to do, so that you're not just, oh, I'm just going to the mountain to grab silver and then I'm done, and then I have to find the boss and then the eggs and that's it. You know, you go to the mountain and think, right, I could go and visit some of the caverns, I could take on some of the monsters like the stone golem and gather the materials for the crystal axe and stuff like that. You know, I don't have to go to the swamp and is it the swamp crypts? Like it's it's these are optional, but they just increase the amount of things that you can do. And it does come with an armor set and some weapons as well, so I quite like them. I think they're very good. 
and if you're looking at making your base as pretty as possible and making it very thematic then having some of these red utes is quite good as well I think we might be nearly finished in this cavern there isn't really much else in here I don't think and we've pretty much seen everything that there is to see in here you've got the cultists you've got the elves like the werewolves you've got the bats and that's pretty much it you've seen the crystals on the side of the caves the cave markings for the law there isn't really much law behind it because you can't see them or change them or anything like that it's literally just there's markings on the wall you've seen the ice walls we've gone through some of the um dungeony areas deeper in the mountains that is pretty much everything now we might have a look at making the fenris armor set we might not it depends on how much of the fenris hair and claws and stuff that we need and if i remember correctly i believe you need quite a lot of them and i don't fancy running multiple caverns in order to make an armor set that i'm probably not going to wear anyway so for now we are going to head back to our portal, we're going to head back home, we're going to craft a couple of things that we can craft with the stuff that we have gathered, mainly the red utes, but we'll also see what the cost and the armour bonus and stuff is of the Fenris armour set. But don't despair though, once we get to the Ashlands and once we've, um, oh, ah, oh, we've got an iron bar on us. My bad. Uh, once we get to the Ashlands and once we've completed the majority of main content in the game, there is nothing that says, well, there's there's no one that says that I can't then make some videos on all these different armor sets. Maybe they won't be part of the playthrough. I might just have showcase videos where it's just a quick couple of minutes, five minutes video of me showcasing the armor sets and how they work and stuff like that, going to their different biomes to use them. So using the root armor set in the in the swamp and using the Fenris armor set on the mountain, stuff like that. I would believe that the Fenris armor set would probably also come with the buff which um, reduces frost damage taken, so that you can still use that set on the on the mountain. Oh, I made to put the Fenris hair in there. We got 31 in total, which is pretty good. Yeah, I just think for now, with the playthrough, I'm not looking at wasting too much time showcasing everything right now. We'll, um, we'll, we'll probably make separate videos and a separate series for that. Especially considering I don't plan on using it, but anyway, let's have a quick look at some of these craftable things and then we'll probably end the video shortly after that. Okay, Fenris leggings. The three part set is Fenris's blessing. The Fenris armor makes you quick on your feet so you can pass through fire and your fists feel the power of the beast. So damage modifier, resistant versus fire and fists damage is plus 15, so it's unarmed damage. Durability is a thousand. And the armor set was, I believe it was a couple lower than the silver, like the basic silver armor set. So again, it's not that bad compared to the silver armor set. Let's see about these claws. Flesh rippers. If claws work for wolves, why not for a viking? Two-handed weapons. Knockback. They get a backstab bonus of six times. They get a parry bonus of six times. I wonder if these count as fist damage or if it's just... I guess it would be fist damage because you're... You know, they're basically just um, brass knuckles, essentially. Just gonna grab some fine wood. Okay, here are the two things we can craft with the red ute. We've got red ute curtains, which I'm gonna place on this little corridor here through to our main crafting room. So we can put them right in the top. You can walk through these as well, so it's not like they're gonna reduce the size of my little tunnel here, my little corridor. It's more of a thematic thing. Again, just to make the place look a bit nicer, give it a bit more decoration than, rather than just being a a basic crafting room. I'm just trying to get this one to line up. That's, that's not too bad. And then we also have... We'll probably go and put this in our thingy room, possibly. Excuse me. Alright, like, let's go into here. Red Duke Curtain, Red Duke Carpet, there we go. So you've got a much larger carpet that you can place down. There we go. Again, it won't increase our comfort level as we already have a rug down from deer hide, I believe it is. But again, I quite like having a few of them down. One of the deer, one of the wolf, and then we're having a Red Duke one as well. try and dump some things in chests that we don't particularly need right now. We're also going to make a brand new chest, which is the reinforced chest. We're going to pop it next to these four. 
And we're going to have this for upgrade and crafting materials for mountain and onwards. So some of the plane stuff will go in there. Again, it's more it's mostly for like boss things and unique things like going to the crypts and stuff like that. Just the power pole of our gear. Probably going to end the episode in just over a minute. And we'll probably have a lot of the mistlands and even maybe the ashland stuff going in there. Although with the mistlands we are going to build a completely separate base and it's going to be... Um, Pretty much as big as this one, if not larger. Because the Mistlands has quite a lot going on in there. But we're not there yet, so we'll cover that when we actually go there. Okay, just quickly checking our food. Dumping everything in the chest. So we're going to put our iron set back in the chest as well, as we don't need it. But thank you for recovering our, our, our items for us. Pretty much saved our life there as well. There we go, perfect. Right. Go sleep through the night and then we'll probably call it there. Just close that gate. Come on, there we go. Oh, I'm wet. I just have to wait for myself to dry, to dry out first. There we go. So, yeah, that is everything for this episode. Hopefully. Well, in our next episode, we'll probably have a look at going back to the mountain and exploring a bit more and maybe getting ready to take on the boss. But for now, we are pretty well upgraded. We might do a little bit more silver gathering. I'm not too sure. We'll, um, we'll decide when we get there. But anyway, thank you everybody for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I shall catch you in the next one.